I'll just say it first. It's not raining today, but I still love you. It's been a few months. Um, that's because several months ago, I was on my couch, just, just on my phone, and they had a TV on in the background, and um, a commercial for the Kardashians came on. And all I heard was, I'm so mad at you. And then I heard another person say, yeah, I'm mad at you too. And it really made me angry. So I looked up for a second, just a second, maybe two, you know, and I think it gave me cancer. Um, but I'm in um, remission now, so uh, here we are, here we go. But I call it cancer with a K, which um, didn't go down too well with the Kardashian fans. But um, today I want to I want to tell you I want to tell you a story. It's uh, it's a little it's a little dark, but it's it's uh, it's heartwarming at the same time. I don't know, and uh, and I miss you guys. So let's 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 start with the story, right? I posted this on Reddit. Um, several about four years ago i think and within 15 minutes of me posting it it was stolen and i know that because one of the commenters said and someone's already stolen it and they put a link to a facebook page where someone's copied and pasted this as their own story and uh and everyone's like oh my god i didn't know are you okay and they were answering back yeah you know life is hard sometimes oh you motherfucker but being reddit and and i mean reddit is a toxic cesspool but you know back then it was a bit better um about 50 Redditors went onto this guy's Facebook page and called him an outright thief, which is, it was funny, it was great. So, when I was about six, I lived in a house that had a very long corridor from, from the front door to the back, and um, it was just narrow, and all the rooms came off this corridor, right? And it was creepy, it scared the fuck out of me, you know, because it was always dark, you know, like, when you step in through the front door, immediately on your left is, is my parents' bedroom, and on your right, I call them crossroads, was the lounge. If you walk down a little further, about six, seven meters or so, um, there's another crossroad intersection. On your left was a bathroom, but it was just a bathroom. It had a bath and a shower and a sink. No toilet. There's no toilet in there. And further to the left was a bedroom. Now, immediately opposite that to the right was the kitchen. And if you walk all the way down the corridor, uh, the toilet was on the left and the laundry was on the right. Now, of course, the toilet just so happened to be right down the end of this creepy ass corridor. Um, this toilet was more like a closet. It was just literally a, a toilet in a tiny room. And when I was six, I'd sit on this toilet and I'd stretch my legs out as far as I'd go to see if they can reach the other wall. And it was about this far away from the other wall. So it was that, that's how small it was. Now, I was terrified of this toilet because it was right down the end of this dark, creepy corridor. But also, there were shapes on, on the walls. The wall was, I think, what they'd call fiber cement sheeting, FC sheeting, or... or um, villa board or whatever it is now i mean i know now i didn't know then right but they had these printed shapes which was a, a repetitive pattern and just as you look up at the clouds and make shapes and hey that looks like santa claus you know um i'd look at these patterns and make shapes but they were all monsters for some reason and i was just fucking terrified so i had this i had this routine when i finished my business um on the toilet i'd have one hand on the door handle and one hand on the flusher and I'd flush, open the door, and bolt down the corridor, you know, because I felt like something was chasing me, right? Now, I used to have nightmares that there was this lady standing at the end of the corridor. And um, it was just, I never saw anything, obviously, but, you know, it was just a, it was a kid thing, you know. The floors were floorboards, and they had a vinyl or a linoleum, linoleum, I can never say it, on top. So when you walked or even tiptoed, it echoed through the whole house. Now, when I used to bolt down the corridor, I used to do my parents' head in. I used to piss them off to no, to, to no end. Because why, you know, I'll just, you should be, be brave. There's nothing scary in this house, right? Why are you telling this, this for abs? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> this is where it gets a little bit dark, right? My father had a very hard life, you know. Uh, by the time he was in the fifth grade, both his parents had died. And he had five siblings, and he was the second eldest. His eldest brother died a year later. So when my father was in, was in sixth grade, he had to work and provide for the family. You know, um, and in Syria, there was a mandatory national military service. So when you hit high school, there's like a cadetship, you know, that you'd, you'd, you'd go through throughout high school. And then after high school, you're in the military for two years. And my dad saw war, you know, um, it was an Arab-Israeli war back then, apparently or something. But um, so he's seen some shit. But the only discipline my father knew was the military. So my father thought it would be a great idea that, as a punishment, he'd locked me up in this toilet. The place that I'm most terrified of and that he knew that um, it was just his, his sort of method. Now, I was a defiant kid, 
you know, and I'd beg and scream and tell him not to, you know, and usually I'd cop a beating and then he'd, you know, pick me up and put me in the toilet, you know, but I would try to reason with him, say, look, just, just hit me, but don't put me in the toilet, please. So my father took it that if I'm asking him to hit me, then the beatings weren't harsh enough. So therefore the beatings got harsher and I'll still be thrown into the toilet. <laughs> so was, uh, I'm laughing because there's, there's a reason behind that. Now I keep shaking my leg, so that squeaking is from the chair. Now he'd lock me up in his toilet and I was not allowed to have the light on. The light had to be off, right? So I'd run out of the toilet and then he'd cop a beating and, you know, throw me back in there. So eventually I learned that, you know, just to shut my mouth and just take it, take the sentence, right? But I was terrified, so I'd scream and I'd reason and I'd beg. And sometimes my father used to come down with a pair of scissors and threaten to cut my tongue off if I wouldn't shut up. So eventually, I, he'd never cut my tongue out, you know, but I'd, I'd, I'd eventually, eventually shut up, you know. So I'd sit in this toilet in the pitch darkness for fucking hours. Now, I had no concept of time when I was a kid. I didn't have a watch, but I know now in hindsight that it was hours at a time sometimes. Um, because there was only one saving grace in this place is that there was a window uh, above the toilet and I gathered up the courage over time to turn my back to the darkness to, you know, I had two choices, man, sit in the dark and stare at the abyss and, you know, obviously there's monsters and whatever there was there or look out the window and, you know, get a little bit of um, comfort out of there. Now, I used to do that. I'd, I'd turn my back and I'd stand on the toilet and I'd look out this window and there were always these three stars i mean there was a lot of stars but there was this three in particular stars that i used to look up on they were always there you know and i didn't know the names of these stars but um i made up names for them myself one of them was mickey because i was in sixth grade and mickey mouse wore red shorts one was bluey and one was louie now later on in life i learned that these stars were the stars of the constellation orion and bluey was rigel this is the southern hemisphere so rigel's, rigel's on the top left um, Louis was Bellatrix, which is down the bottom left, and Mickey, my favorite, um, was Beetlejuice, was a red star, you know, and I'd talk to these stars, you know, I'd ask them for help, and I became friends with them, you know, it's kind of sad, but, um, they never spoke back to me, but in my head there was a dialogue, you know, and I had some really deep and meaningful conversations with these stars, you know, and, um, Bluey was the first one to go, always, this is how I knew that hours have passed, in hindsight, um, you could just imagine how many hours it would take for the constellation of Orion, the largest constellation in the sky, to totally disappear from view, you know. So, Bluey was the first one to go, I couldn't see him anymore, and then it was Bellatrix or, or Louie and, and Mickey, Beetlejuice, which were the last two. And then eventually Bellatrix, because Bellatrix kind of sits like that compared to Beetlejuice in the sky here. So, Bellatrix was the next to go, and I felt that Mickey was always there for me. Mickey used to hang back just to keep an eye on me you know, um, and then eventually Mickey would disappear, and then I was all alone again, and um, eventually I'd just sort of resign myself to just sitting in the darkness, and I used to say, look, just, just do it, you know, whatever it is out there, monsters, whatever I'm terrified of, just get it over with, man, you know, just, just do it, nothing ever happened, you know, um, now before everyone starts hating on my dad and saying this is child abuse, now call it what you want, you know, um, but my dad, later on in life changed and became the most beautiful person you've ever met in your life the most humble the most down to earth you learn from your mistakes uncalled for unjustified for a kid maybe you know but it is what it is you know he didn't know any better at the time and he apologized to me many times in life saying that he was too harsh on me as a child now the reason i'm telling you this story because you're probably wondering what the fuck you know um is that until this day every night um when i look up at the night sky i'm like ah there you are you know and i remember my friends that looked over me at night while I was in this dark abyss, terrified of this fucking toilet, you know, but the question arises is that if I was to go back, if I was able to go back and change anything, would I change anything? And the answer is absolutely not. No fucking way. No, I wouldn't. Why? Because it taught me to control my fear, number one. It gave me a thick skin and... I became fearless. There is not a person or anything in this world that I fear, you know, besides spiders, fuck them. I mean, everyone's scared of spiders now, but um, that's the thing. I developed a thick skin and I learned how to control my fear and I learned that fear is mostly in your head, you know, for, for the most part. So I was a very brave kid after that and I turned out to be a very brave adult. But also, when people try to intimidate me, in life you're going to get people like that, you know. 
I think to myself, and sometimes I've said it verbally, you know, to people, it's like, man, I was braver as a six-year-old child than you are right now as a grown-ass man. Do your fucking worst. What are you going to do? You know? And also, um, in jail, when you get threatened with solitary, I'm like, solitary? I did that as a child, man. You know, this is going to be a piece of cake. No problem. You know? But my whole point to this is that sometimes, or a lot of times, good can come from bad. It just depends on how you handle it, you know? Um, when you look at it in the picture where I just explained to you where this is what happened to me as a child, or one of the many fucking fucked up things that happened to me as a child, you think, oh, that's, that's, that's fucked, that's bad, you know, and whatever. But when you zoom out, I would not change a thing. It's made me the man I am today, you know? And may, look, there's different ways of approaching things, but I would not change a thing. I would not change a thing. So the only advice I can give people is if you've been through a bad experience, there's two paths you can take. You know, one path is to dwell on it and let it consume you and spiral. And I know not everyone has it in them where they can, you know, level up and, and beat it. And you're only human, fair's fair, it is what it is, you know. But you can take that negative experience and turn it into a strength and become fucking invincible in your mind anyway, you know. Um, but that's all I've got. Look, it's, it's not raining, again, but I do love you. You know how this works, you know. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm back. Um, I, I, I would look for a while. I didn't feel pretty enough to be in front of the camera. You know, I felt sick and I wasn't bad and I wasn't good. And I had stress with work and anxiety and shit. I get anxiety, you know, I still get it. It's not fear. It's not fear. It's anxiety. Um, some people think anxiety is correlated with fear. It's not. It's anxiety. I'm anxious because I've got so much shit to do and I just don't have time to do it, you know, but I'm back and hopefully I'll be making some more videos. And you know what? Can you please leave me a comment and let me know what you want me to talk about next? Cause, um, I've been very spiritual lately, you know, just itching to talk about spirituality, but it doesn't have to be that. Anyway, it is what it is, and it's been 12 minutes and 8 seconds, so this has gone way too far anyway, so I love you, goodbye.